Hey, hey, what's up, man? It's your boy PK, man. You know, fresh off the press, man. We in chapter 16, man. If you don't have this book, man, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you go get it, man. It's my new book, man. Right here, man. The 40 Laws of Game, Pimpology. Log on to pimpkin.net, type in, click here, purchase the book. Today, we're going to talk about chapters. We're going to, we're going to read from chapter 16. We're going to talk about give motivation and inspiration. You know, when I was young, man, you know, and I was in the game and I was really down about my, my money, man. You know, one of the things that I used to do, man, I used to go to these boosters, man. I used to buy these mean coats from them. I used to give them a stack or whatever, you know what I mean? And, you know, they had to sell me the coat. And I'd take the coats to my man, Jim, who owned the first car. I'd be like, look, Jim, man, I really had this young lady, man, that's really interested in getting, you know, some nice stuff, Jim. I said, what I need you to do, Jim, is I need you to give me the retail value on this mean coat because... I'm definitely going to bring the young lady back and I need you to work with me, Jim, because when I bring her back, I want her to purchase this coat. So Jim said, well, the coat worth 15000 so I just made a $14,000 markup, you know, got the coat cheap in the streets. So I bring the young lady to Jim, you know, we walk around, we look at a few meats. Jim eventually steered her to the meat that I want her to have the one that I purchased. Now, here's the key to that. Once she see the coat and she see how much it costs, She'd be instantly, you could see the happiness on her face because she's saying, wow, this cat is willing to spend $15,000 on me, on me, to buy a coat for me for $15,000. I said, well, here's, here's what we're going to do, darling. We're going to put $2,000 on this coat, and we're going to work towards the $15,000, and we're going to put $2,000 to $1,000 a week. So even if we put $1,000 a week, that's 14 weeks, and say if the chick you know, was a good worker, you know what I mean, a good hustler, she can make a stack or two stacks a day. Then they give you 15 weeks to play with, you know, and you know, anything can happen in 15 weeks. But this is how I used to do when I was young and I was in the gang, you know, many years ago, you know, when I was a very young man, you know, but it was one of the ways that I would use to motivate people. I was also go to the jewelry store, you know, get some jewelry off the streets, take it to my man, my jeweler, and let him do the same thing. You know, bring the chicken in there and she see what she want and she pick it and it's marked up ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Now she got something to work for. She got motivation because she see that she want this ring. And you know, same thing with a car. Go buy the car for an auction, eight thousand dollars. You know, they mark it up twenty five thousand. So now she got something to work for. She want this car. And that's what it's all about. And that's how they do in corporate America, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, it's all about business. You know, you got to make sure that the people that's up under you have some type of form of motivation. You know, it's like dangling a carrot, you know, to a rabbit. You know what I mean? The rabbit always trying to get that carrot, but he never gets it. But he always chasing it. But at least he got something to chase. You know, at least he got some motivation. At least he ain't just sitting there. And that's what life is all about. You have to give motivation and inspiration. You know, I mean, I know a lot of companies, you know, they... Don't use uh, bonuses. They don't use different things. Some companies like to use motivational speakers. And they bring people in there and they talk about, you know, how they came from these small beginnings and, you know, eventually lived the American dream and obtain all this money and so on and so forth. And, you know, how they got rich and you know, how they help other people to get rich. I mean, this is the American way. But no matter what it is, you know, you still have to be motivated. You still have to be inspired to do great things. You, you need to have some type of incentive. And that's what corporate America does. That's what the game used to do. You know, I mean, you know, you had to always, you know, the, sharp, the smart dudes, they knew that, you know, you could just put a dame out there and expect her to bring some money back. You had to have some real game and you got to have some real motivation. You know, you had to have something to make her feel like, you know, hey, at least I'm going to get a house out the deal. I'm going to get some jewelry. I'm going to get some meats. You know, I'm not just going to leave the game empty handed. And most good guys, you know, that play the game, they do make sure that the days end up all right. Because if you don't, she's going to leave you and she's going to find somebody else's program that symbolizes, you know, what I'm talking about. Some type of motivation, giving them the inspiration, giving them some type of incentive so they can go out there and do what they have to do and come up. You know, because nobody want to work for nothing. I don't care how good you look, how good your sex or whatever. Eventually, you know, the, inv the invariable question is going to come is, what has this guy done for me lately? What am I going to get out of it? 
That's what most people know. What am I going to get out of this situation? And you got to let them know what they're going to get out of it. That's very important. Let me read from this chapter, man, because, you know, I like to read from the book because a lot of people, you know, the book is what most of you guys are learning for. It says, uh, it is important that a hoe doesn't feel like she's hoeing for nothing. Oh, boy. You know what I'm saying? She don't want to feel like she's hoeing for nothing. You know what I mean? She had to constantly have an incentive, you know, a carrot dangling in front of her face. A pimp has to keep her distracted with the things she thinks she wants. And he has to, he, he, he has to constantly fill her head with more and more things for her to want. I mean, it sounds like manipulation, but it's not. It's just the way the game goes. You got to go from the mink to the Jews, from the Jews to the car, you know, from the car to the house. You know, you just got to keep on going, man. You got to keep on, you know, uh, giving them more and more motivation and they got to keep on achieving more and more things in order for them to stay down with your program. If you don't do that, then, man, you also, it's a strong chance that, you know what I'm saying, you're not going to keep them focused. They're going to lose focus and they're going to go on to the next program, as I said earlier. Yeah, I'm going to read a little bit more. It says, uh, people work to survive, but they only work hard when they want something really bad. You know, when you instill in somebody something and they want it bad, man, they work hard, Jack. I mean, ain't nothing like seeing a person who wants something. I mean, how many times, you know, have you seen, I mean, in my situation, I see my kids, you know, they would be like, you know, Dad, I need a pair of true religion jeans. I'm going to get a summer job. I do whatever you ask me to do. Dad, please, I want these jeans. What, Dad, can I clean the house up? Can I wash your car? They want it so bad that they're willing to do anything, anything to get that. And I see this with my own children. You know what I'm saying? They always coming at me with game, but you know, hey, y'all, I know if y'all see this, you know, Pops is full of it, right? But you know, hey, y'all want to think y'all can play Pops, you know what I'm saying? I'll give y'all that, man. Y'all can get over OB where y'all want to, man. I love y'all. But don't think that Pops ain't sharp enough to know where y'all coming from. Don't think that, you understand, these faculties don't work because these faculties is real. I ain't got this big old head for nothing. You know what I mean? But you know, my kids, that's how they is. You know what I'm saying? When they want something, they tell me they'll do anything. But if I tell them, hey, boy, clean up your room, they look at me like I'm crazy. They look at me like I'm a prison guard, like I got them in some type of captivity. Well, how dare you ask me to clean up my room? Room dirty as hell. But they won't look at me like that. But when they want something really bad, man, they willing to work really hard for it. And I'm pretty sure those of you who have children can relate to what I'm saying. And I'm going to go on and read a little more. It says, uh, uh, it says, in corporate America, they dangle raises, bonuses, and commissions over a worker's head, even though it's just money that they should have been paying him all along. Without these gains, he might have the motivation to get up every day, go to that job and to do the minimum not to get fired. But the incentive inspired him to really hustle. You know, even in corporate America, man, they dangle raises. They tell you if you know if you do this, you're gonna go to a management position. You go from an entry level position to management, assistant management, from assistant management to executive to eventually owning the corporation. And this is how life is, man, in every aspect of life. The military do the same thing. You know, they tell you to be all you can be. They, you know, uh, you go from sergeant to lieutenant to captain to general, you know, all the way to president. This is how they do it. They give, you got to give motivation and inspiration if you want to see results. It's been chapter 16. I thank you for listening. Next chapter will be chapter 17. Peace.